Hi, David from Electric Teaching here, and I'd like you had I'd like to show you how to handle or simplify uh, compound fractions. I'm going to give you two different methods. I'm going to do something that's probably the more familiar and the most common way it's taught in class is using common denominators. So just using common denominators. So what I'll do is I'll make common denominator on top, common den denominator on the bottom, and then I'll flip and multiply, and we should get a simplified answer. And then I'd like to show you another way, uh, kind of a shortcut that I like to use as often as I can. It's uh, called, what I like to call is BOF, or blow out fractions. In this context, it means I'd blow out the lower, the smaller fractions inside here. Um, this is a compound fraction because of the fractions in the bigger fraction. All right, let's get started. Try common denominator trick first. So that should be straightforward. I've already done a common denominator of uh, rationals. I've already done a smaller problem like doing the numerator here in a previous video. Might want to check it out if you are a little confused about this first step. So I need a common denominator here. We need a 6 over 6 to multiply by. So that'll give me then a 5 minus 12 on top. 5 minus 12 or negative 7 in a second over 6x. Six 6x. Six Go ahead and write that all the way through. That's negative 7 then over 6x. The denominator, the denominator of the big fraction, and its common denominator looks to be a simple one here. I think 3 over 3 should solve our problem. So this one looks to be uh, 7, numerator, 7 over 3x. I'll just rewrite it here, 7 over 3x. All right, now we'll flip and multiply. Always flip the bottom one. Don't flip both, and you end up with uh, getting nowhere, really. Only flip the bottom one. Negative 7x multiplied by, okay, the flip, 3x over 7. This is now going to equal a little canceling along the way. Let's see, x's, that makes a 1. The 3 and the 3 in there make a 1. That leaves the 2, though. And the 7 and the 7 are gone. They make a 1. And we've removed all the 1's. We've canceled everything, in other words. And the only thing left is a 1 on top, negative 1, and a 2 on the bottom. So our answer is negative 1 half. Simplified very nicely. Lost all the variables along the way. Now, that, I want you to make sense of this. If I plug and chug x is equal to 5, what's the answer in this question? Negative one half. If I plug and chug x equal to 10, what's the answer? Negative one half. I think you're getting the pattern. If I plug and chug x equals zero, what will happen? Aha, watch out. It's not going to be negative one half. Zero's out of the domain. Can't plug and chug zeros, so it'll give you a domain arrow. So, trick question there at the end. Let's try another one. Oh, wait. I want to show you how to do the same problem in a, what I call blowing out fraction style. This one wasn't too hard, so blowing out fractions may not be any quicker, may not even be any easier, but having this tool on your tool belt, as I like to say to my students, I think is a great idea. To blow out all these little fractions, I want to think common denominator. What is the least common denominator for all four of these denominators? Let's see, I need a 6 and I need a 3, which is in the 6. So you start thinking about what it needs to be to be the common denominator. I need an x. And I think I need a 6. And I think that'll work. I think 6x would be the common denominator. Does x and x and 3x and 6x all equally go into here without leaving any remainders? And, and they do. They do. So 6x is the common denominator. Neat little trick is to multiply by the common denominator, the least common denominator of all four mini fractions here, by multiplying top and bottom to each of these. And this will simplify the fraction nicely. When you do that, you have to think 6x is being multiplied to two terms here. I often tell my students it might be helpful for you to put a little mini times 6x there and a little mini times 6x here, distributing in this bigger denominator puts a little 6x there and puts a little 6x there. And then you can just watch everything cancel and be left with on top, on top, what's on top there? 5 minus 12, negative 7. Simple. 
And then on the bottom, let's see, on the bottom here, if we multiply by the 6x, 6x is going to cancel and leave a 2. And it's going to cancel, uh, whoops, not the whole 6x, it's going to cancel just the x and just the x and leave a 6. So it looks like I'm going to get 8 plus 6, 8 plus 6. Let me do that in black, get the right answer. So 8 plus 6 is 14, final answer, negative 1 half. I don't know. Seems a lot slicker. I like this move. I call this blowing out the fractions. Most books call it removing the fractions with common denominators or something more uh, explicit like that. I like to just call it blowing out the fractions. Let's try another one. A little more complicated. Um, 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x over 2 over x squared minus 2 over x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, common denominator, common denominator here. Let's try that way first and then we'll try the BOF trick. So if I was thinking common denominator, what do I need in each one of these to make a common denominator on top? This one looks to be missing an x over x. And this part over here looks to be missing an x plus 1 over an x plus 1. That'll give it the common denominator we're looking for. So then the new equation here would be x minus x plus 1. Don't forget the negative distribution there. That's a common mistake. People will lose that. Then denominator over here. What do I need to make this common? This one's missing the x squared over the x squared. And this one's missing the x plus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, again, if you're having trouble with just simple common denominator tricks here, I have video. I have a previous video on that. So the lower, the, the, deno the big denominator here will have a 2x, whoops, let me do this in black, a 2x plus 2, that's distributing here, minus x squared all over um, looks like an x squared times x plus 1. So that's now common denominator. You cannot flip these with minuses. You have to have a fraction that is a single fraction with a single shared denominator to be able to flip them. So I could not flip at this moment and multiply. I have to get common denominator and then flip and multiply. So let's see how that looks. Hang on, I need more room here. Sorry about that. Let's see. We've got this now equal to um, numerator on top, numerator. That looks to be x minus x minus 1. So I think I have just a negative 1 left on top with an x times x plus 1. Flipping the bottom and multiplying. Flipping the bottom and multiplying. x squared over x plus 1. And a, I'll lead with the x squared term, negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. This might break down. I'm not positive. I'll take a look at it in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Let's see. What cancels? This cancels one of the x's. So I'll get rid of the square to leave the x. The x plus 1 cancels with the x plus 1. That makes a 1 multiplied. So we need to remove that. The only thing left is a negative x on top, negative x on top, over a negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. I was trying to make sure he stayed in the video there. I'm not sure if I did. Um, and technically, I'd have to clean this up. Like we got to get rid of that negative. And there's a negative in front here and a negative in front here. So that if we factor out the negatives and cancel, it'll leave x over x squared minus 2x, factoring out the negative, changes the sign, minus 2. And now that I can see this with a positive x squared, this does not break down. The factors of 2 don't have a difference of 2. So that's not going to work. This is our final answer. Let's try the same problem. Let's try the same problem here with uh, what I call the BOF style, blowing out the fraction style. So let's make myself a little more room and see if I can rewrite this. 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x. Start thinking what's the common denominator for this entire compound fraction. For every 
denominator in here. There are four denominators. What is the common denominator of each? Ask yourself that question. What are the factors and what are the most it's occurring? That's how we do that. So what are the factors and what it's the most it's occurring? I have an x plus 1. I have an x plus 1. One time here, one time here. The most it's occurring is one time. I have an x occurring once here, twice here. The most it is occurring is twice. And you need to have the most it's occurring to be able to cancel the highest one. That's why that trick works, so that question really helps guide you. Multiplying by a form of 1, that way we are not changing the essence of the problem. All right, let's see where this goes. I will then cancel some, or I will distribute the x plus 1 and x, and x squared. In a sense, I'm putting a little x plus 1 here and an x squared, and I'm doing the same here, x plus 1 and an x squared. Once you get good at this, you tend not to rewrite these all the time. I only have students rewrite these in all these little spots just to make sure you can see it at the beginning and you don't lose anything. During a test, I might do this just to be safe. But after a while, you get used to it and you'll be able to put that in. So this guy's right here. and I'm just having trouble squeezing it in. Let's see what cancels. Okay, x plus 1 cancels here. Leaves x squared. So, right off the bat, this thing's nicely reduced, okay? This thing is x squared on top. Yeah, I don't want the purple there, hang on. Okay, this thing is x squared on top. That's all that's left for this one, minus 1 times, a little bit trickier here, a little bit trickier here, the one of the x's cancels with one of the x's up there, so that's going to leave minus x squared, and minus x if I distribute carefully. Minus x squared, okay, and minus x. On the bottom, again, what cancels? What's left? x squares go by com go by by completely. Make a form of one there. x plus one times two. X plus one times two. Okay, so that's a two x plus two. Over here, if this is on top, the x minus the x plus ones cancel, the x plus ones cancel, and it leaves a minus x squared, and it'll leave a minus x squared. And in what I consider like one shot, not two separate moves like I did before, but in one shot, I get the negative x over the negative x squared plus 2x plus 2, and which, as we know, simplifies to right above. Well, I'm David from Electro Teaching. I hope that I have helped.